OCO family, so I'm back with part two of Mayans and Montezuma. We left off on Kukulkan, meaning divine serpent or the divine four. Smoke with me again this session as we continue to dive deeper. The Maya sculptors or scribes began to represent this symbol of divinity. They must have searched for some object easy to depict the sound of whose name resembled that of Ku or Ku. The Maya adjective feathered being Kukum, the artist evidently devised the plan of representing as an effigy of the divinity, a serpent decorated with feathers and to this simple attempt at representing the divine serpent in sculpture or pictography is due in my opinion the origin of feathered serpent. Effigies found in Yucatan and Mexico have so puzzled archaeologists. Of Kuku Khan, the culture hero of the Mayans, it is recounted that he had been one of four brothers who had originally ruled Chicha Insa over four tribes. These brothers chose no wives but lived chastely and ruled righteously until a certain time one died or departed and two began to act unjustly and were put to death. The one remaining was Kuku Khan. He appeased the strife which his brother's acts had arose directed the minds of the people to the arts of peace and had caused to be built various edifices. After he had completed his work at Chicha Issa, he founded the great city of Mayapan, destined to be the capital of the confederacy of the Mayas. Friar Diego de Landa relates that the current opinion amongst the Indians of Yucatan was that this ruler had gone to Mexico where after his return he was named Cesar Cotto and revere as one of their gods. Before analyzing the Nawal rendering of Kuku Khan's name, I will point out the noteworthy coincidence that during his reign at Chincha Insa and Mayapan, he practically united in his person and assumed the offices formally fulfilled by four rulers of which he had only been one. I would moreover draw attention to the remarkable sculptured columns which support the main portal of the main pyramid temple called El Castillo at Chincha Insa. These represent gigantic feathered serpents and are figured on page 104 of Mr. W. M. Holmes' Most Instructive Useful Archaeological Studies, Part 1, Monuments of Yucatan. The feathers carved on the massive columns are evidently the precious tail feathers of Quazel, which have peculiarity of exhibiting, according to the way the light falls upon them, blue, red, yellow, and green colors, precisely those assigned to the four quarters by the Mexicans and for all we know, to the contrary, by the Mayas. Whether this feather was chosen for its peculiarity or for its beauty only, as with that which to deck the effigy of the divinity can of course only be conjectured. In Mexico, numberless effigies of feathered serpents exist. The resemblance of the sound of the Nahuatl words, forgive me if I butcher these words, feather equals Iwetle, and heaven or sky equals Iwika, should be recorded here as a possible reason for the association of feathers with the serpent and as a means of conveying the idea of its divinity. It should also be noted that Quasal, the name of the most precious feathers the natives possess, resembles in sound the second part of the Nahuatl words for flame, equals Tlil Kukaloro, or for tongue or fire equals Tlil Kuka Nenepili. That the feather serpent was an image of the divinity is finally proven. I think by the following passage from Sawagans, which establishes that the earliest form under which the divinity was revered by the Mexicans was that of fire. Of all the gods, the most ancient one is the god of fire, who dwells in the midst of flowers, in an abode surrounded by four walls, and is covered with shining feathers like wings. It is thus shown that whilst the word Iwato equals feathers suggested something divine, the word Quazel, besides being the name of a particular kind of feather, conveyed the idea of something resplendent or shiny. The name for serpent, Kodo, signified twin. Thus, there is a profound analogy between the Maya and Mexican symbol pointing, however, to the Yucatan form as the most ancient. Let's see how the name Quazacoto occurs in Mexico. 
It is given as the name of the supreme God whose substance was as invisible and intangible as air. The constant reference to air in the connection with the supreme divinity calls him to be also adored as the God of air and of the four winds. On the other hand, the divine title of Quasicoto was carried by the culture hero whose personality has been discussed and who was a Yucatec ruler and a high priest. Saogon's book informs us that Quetzalcoatl, the plural form of the word Quasicoto, was employed to designate the high priest, elsewhere designated as the supreme pontiffs, who were the successors of Quasicoto. He also states that the high priest of the temple was the representative of the god Quasicoto. The priest who was most perfect in his conduct and in wisdom was elected to be high priest and assumed the name of Quasicoto. There were two such high priests equal in rank and honors. One of these, the Quasicoto Toltec Talama Kaske, was in the service of Huzilo Pochettili. Without pausing here to analyze this title, since it will be discussed in detail in another publication, I will only repeat that after years of careful research, I have obtained certainty that the foregoing title and office were those held by Montezuma at the time of conquest. What is more, I can produce ample evidence to prove that he was the living personification of Huzilo Pochettili, one of the divine twins and of the above. He was not the first Mexican ruler who had filled this exalted role, for it is recorded that Asha Yakata and one of Akama Pochettili's successors had represented in life our god Huzilo Pochettili. After his death, his effigy was first covered with a fine robe representing Huzilo Pochettili. Over this was hung a dress of Talok. The next garment was that of Yu Alahua equals the Lord of the Will and the fourth was that of Quasicoto. Let us now see how Montezuma's personification of Huzolo Pochettili was carried out by his life and his surroundings. According to Bernal Diaz, an eyewitness when a great Montezuma came forth in state to meet Cortez, he was conveyed on a sumptuous litter, being thus raised above the earth. For all those that don't know, a sumptuous litter is just like an expensive bed that the royal people um, was carried on by um, their subjects. When he descended from this and walked, the golden soles from his sandals prevented his feet from coming into direct contact with the ground. He was supported, i.e. partially held up by his four principal lords and a baldachin adorned with light greenish blue feathers, gold, pearls, and jade representing Shoshokui, Iwakatili, and the verdant or blue sky, which was, by the way, the title of his Zolo Pochettili and was carried over his head. All right, family. So it's getting close to that 10 minute mark. So I'm going to um, close it out right here. We're going to resume in part three and finish this build out. And please subscribe to the YouTube Smoking Sessions with Chief Pressure. Um, peace, love, and power to all my people. Till next time. Smoking Sessions with Chief Pressure.